the Cleveland Cavaliers select Evan Mobley. It's been a historical franchise in this league for years. We have a trade to announce. The Boston Celtics select Jason Tatum. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the NBA Front Office Show. I'm Trevor Lane. You can find me on Twitter at Trevor underscore Lane. Joined, as always, by Keith Smith at Keith Smith NBA. We've got some news and notes to get to. We'll probably do the Western Conference buyers and sellers maybe tomorrow. We did Eastern Conference yesterday, but we've got some news to get into today. But Keith, before I get into that, there's something that I've been meaning to address on here for like the last few shows, and I keep forgetting once I get into my opening intro, intro spiel. So... I have seen in our comments section a number of times people have characterized this show as the best kept secret NBA show out there. And while I certainly appreciate that that people hold us in that high regard, please don't keep us a secret. Tell your friends. Tell your friends about this show. Uh, Let them know where to find us over on the YouTube channel. Of course, if they want to listen over on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever, help us spread the word. We would certainly appreciate it. Yeah, no doubt. This isn't like your favorite band where you have to keep them to yourself because <laughs> then they're going to get too popular for you to like. We're not going to get that popular. So you can share us with friends, you know, and we'll stay the same two likable guys, hopefully, or maybe you hate watch us, which I guess that's fine. Sure. too. I would hope not. But but if you do, I, I understand. I get it. We we are, uh, you know, b- between us, uh, we have rooting interest in 34 championships. So that's, uh, you know. Not always the most likable thing in the world, but hey, it is what it is, and we'll 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 take it from there. And uh, with that, let's spend the next hour and a half breaking down Mason Jones, G League Player of the Month nod uh, for the South Bay Lakers. I all I did on that, I didn't even tweet that out myself. I just retweeted somebody <laughs> who had reported yeah. that he was. I mean, look, that's great for Mason Jones and everything. But, yeah, absolutely. But yes, yeah. you're right. We're not going to spend that much time on Mason Jones being the G League Player of the of the month, but great. For him, great job, Mason. Yeah, that's already more time than we planned. Absolutely. On that story. All right, let's get in. Let's it. talk about another guard, and that's Jalen Brunson, a guy who's been had his name on the trade market quite a bit. A lot of teams wondering, you know, are the Mavs really going to keep this guy long term? If not, could he be a piece that the Mavs decide to move? And Keith, you and I have talked quite a bit about the challenges associated with that because he actually doesn't make enough. Like, you would probably be easier to find a trade for Jalen Brunson if he made like $10 million. Although, as you've mentioned, mm-hmm. the Mavs do have a trade exception in there. Well, now we're hearing that Jalen Brunson, his preference, even though he's not signing his extension with the Mavs, is to stay long term in Dallas. And that would require working out a new deal this offseason. So, Keith, do you think that could put the brakes on Brunson being moved if the message being sent from his camp is, hey, Dallas, I want to stay here. I'd rather re-sign with you guys this offseason. Yeah, I think it was Tim McMahon on the low posts uh, from ESPN said it would take a offer where it's like, wait, you are offering what now? I am paraphrasing. It might have been something different, but basically a crazy offer to to get Jalen Brunson. And I think the thing that that tells us is, OK, they really don't want to move him. And that makes sense. Right. He's playing great. He's proven to be a pretty good backcourt fit with mm-hmm. Luca. Um, as long as you have the right guys at three, four, five, you can build a pretty good defense, uh, despite those two not necessarily being great defenders themselves. So uh you're gonna struggle with the very, you know, the really quick guards and things like that. That could be a problem. But you know, hopefully you get the big guy back there, Porzingis and you know, another sizable player, usually they play Maxi Kleba or something, and you can build enough of a wall that it doesn't impact you. So I think that is where Dallas is hoping is, hey, we're going to keep Jalen Brunson. And at the worst, he becomes the one of the best six men yeah. in the league at, you know, the best. He's a starting guard and we feel pretty good, you know, about the, the way this roster is coming together. And I think there's a thought of right now, Luke is kind of a guard but you could put him out forward if you got a really good defensive guard in there. It doesn't, you know, that's all kind of become a, you know, mismosh. It's all, you know, it flows together anyway. Now um, within that world and their ecosystem and in their offense. So yeah, this says to me, he's not going anywhere by the trade deadline unless either they get a silly offer or they're able to put him plus Hardaway plus something else together to go get a star. That seems kind of unlikely. Are you worried at all about the excitement level? 
of the trade deadline. It feels like we're hearing more and more teams are not going to trade. And part of that is this time of year. It's It behooves yeah. teams to say, oh, no, 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 no. We really like this guy. We want to keep this guy, <laughs> and, and, you know, for bargaining purposes. But we've heard now, I mean, we've heard the Rockets are, are now loath to move Eric Gordon. Now, whether or not that's true, again, but uh, Jalen Brunson here. We're hearing more teams are being hesitant to move players. I, I, like, could this have a cumulative effect of being a somewhat of a disappointing trade deadline, if that's the case? It could. I mean, I've seen some reporting that some teams are basically saying, hey, we're going to run with what we have. Um, part of that is some teams still don't entirely know who they are because, you know, normally it's right around Christmas and the first of the year that teams feel pretty good about. All right, here's who we are. They take the next month. They work through it. And then we're at the deadline. Now, this year, that process is really still happening now for some teams because some of these teams had a month or so from mid to late December through mid to late January kind of wiped out with all the COVID absences and things like that. So I think that's got things a little slower to develop. Went through that whole period where basically everything went on hold because it was, I just got to fill out rosters with G League call-ups right now. But I think it is where that period from a week to two weeks out from the deadline is got to get a first round pick for him. And another team says, I'm not giving you a first round pick. And then lo and behold, trade deadline week or trade deadline day, it's all right, how's two second rounders? Okay, that works. Let's go. And that's, mm -hmm. I think it's just, we're still posturing right now. And that, that'll be your know, word will go from here. But the other thing that could really hold things up is this whole Ben Simmons situation. Cause you still have teams that are, yeah, we could still maybe get in that. And even if we're not direct, maybe we're the third team in that deal and those kind of things. So let, let's see. I'm, you know, fingers crossed. I'll do it right here on camera. Fingers crossed. We get a massive, you know, crazy trade deadline. But, you know, I think we need to be prepared to maybe lower expectations too and see where, where it all plays out. Uh, if we don't, I think we're going to get an extremely busy summer because mm -hmm. teams do not sit two periods out. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. You'll, you'll get teams will go crazy um, in the summer times, really starting with the draft and then into the off season if they don't get stuff done now. Absolutely. And I mean, just even look at you, this is the NBA front office show from the front office perspective. If you sit out the trade deadline and then you sit out the off season, essentially, and you don't really do anything. That's when ownership is going to look and say, well, yep. what are you doing? Right. Like what in the, the players as well? Yes. Yeah. Right. So that's that's absolutely job performance is, is wrapped up in this as well. What are you doing to make this team better? Can you point to something that you don't? What have you done for me lately? That's a thing for the front office as well. Yep. Um, but you mentioned Ben Simmons, and this is not Simmons siren worthy. But at this point, according to reporting, Ben Simmons has lost now $19 million this season. Over, over 19, 19 now. Million. Yeah, I mean, what? <laughs> He's got to be yeah. losing more every single day at this point. That's a lot of, I mean, that's, in the NBA, we operate in this completely different world in terms of money where we're talking about, you know, oh, $10 million, $10 million is a bargain contract and, and things of that nature, but still $19 million. I don't care who you are. That's a lot. That's a lot of money to have lost due to yeah. fines. Yeah. This came from Ramona Shelburne um, at ESPN and she reported, uh, each missed game costs him 360,000. Uh, he has not cleared a paycheck since the, he got that upfront payment on October 1st, which he did get. Um, we had that confirmed. That was 8.25 million. Pretty sure he's probably doing okay and making it work off just that money without the rest coming in. But $19 million, man, that's no joke. I mean, that is, that is a massive, massive amount of money. The other things that teams also get, gets fined or teams can find players for um, are things like missed community appearances and things like that. Players have to do so many community appearances. You don't do those. Ben Simmons is doing nothing with the 76ers. He's not practicing. He's not going to any team events. He's not going to games, none of that stuff. So it sounds like we're right back to where we were of they're finding everything. They are the, the number that gets to the end of the season. It's another $12 million in fines, $31 million, $32 million total for him that he would uh, uh, get. Normally every week he should get about $1.4 million, or every two weeks. Uh, NBA players are pay, paid on the 1st and 15th of the month. He should get about a $1.4 million check, and he's not getting any right now. So that is – that's where if you're Ben Simmons, this better work, mm -hmm. right? Because – 
that money's not coming back. There's an expectation he's going to file a grievance. It'll go to arbitration and it'll be a mess. That is something I will tell you the NBA does not want because they do not want to get into a position where then the next guy says, you know what? I, I don't feel like I'm there mentally to play for this team. And I don't feel that I should be, you know, held to sticking here and all that stuff. And it starts to become, what does a contract mm-hmm. mean if you're not living up to it? So let's see where this all goes. Cause it's going to get, it's going to get a lot uglier um, because again, I think we're, we're looking to, he may not be traded here in the next week and a half. Not what we were expecting. Not what we were expecting. Yeah. Certainly coming into this whole situation, we said, okay, by the trade deadline, he'll be, he'll be gone. But I thought he'd be done even sooner by yeah, by the middle of December, I thought when they really freed up and all the guys who were signed this off season were able to be traded, I thought that's when this would get done was around there. And nope, here off we went. And you know, yeah, we're nine days from the trade deadline. I don't think it's happening there's now. A, uh, I've completely reversed course. There's a shiny James Harden waiting in the, in the summer, so that's um, that's, that's apparently catching the eye of Daryl Morey. Um, yep. From one clutch sports client to another. LeBron James, I've got a little update. I actually just hopped out about 20 minutes ago of, well, maybe a little more, 30 minutes ago of the Lakers post-practice presser. And Frank Vogel was asked, of course, quite a bit about LeBron James and what's going on. Russell Westbrook was also asked about LeBron, although Russ said, well, he hasn't talked to him. Well, no, wait, I talked to him, but we didn't talk about basketball, but he thinks he's okay. <laughs> that, that was Russell Westbrook's response on what's going on with LeBron. So Frank Vogel was asked about where. where <laughs> Can I go to that for a second? That's Russell Westbrook saying, if I said I didn't talk to him, that's going to become a whole story. Mm-hmm. So let me cover with Garrett. They talked. I mean, come on. It's not, you know, it's not these guys hate each other. So, you know, that was just more of a, oh, crap. I shouldn't have said that. I, you know, basically he didn't, he, he doesn't want to be the one giving the LeBron James injury update. And that's, you know, sometimes it's, you know, just say that, right? So like, I don't know, guys, I don't, I'm not the doctor, right? And then we'll move on from there. But yeah, that's a, that was a little CYA. Well, well done by Russ. <laughs> Speaking of, of which, so Frank Vogel, I'm going to get to LeBron, but Frank Vogel was also asked about Ken, Kendrick Nunn. And he finished with this comment, and I put it out there knowing that it wasn't going to go over well, and I'd probably have to go back and explain it. But he said, no update on Kendrick Nunn. He's not sure whether or not he got out on the court today. And people are, what do you, he's the head coach. How would he not know if he's not out on the court? Teams break down practice sessions, right? If Frank Vogel's working with the whole yeah. team in a drill, other guys who are rehabbing from injury, they're working elsewhere individually with a, with a shooting coach or whatever. They're not, it's not like they're all, it's not like your high school practice where you're all just in the one, one big yeah. gym yeah. and, and you can, you know, your head coach sees everybody and all that kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. in any event, Frank Vogel was asked about LeBron James and what's going on. And he said that LeBron as of right now is doubtful, doubtful to play against the Blazers. And so right now, the reporting that's been out so far today has been that LeBron is out. Frank Vogel would not go that far. Said he's doubtful for the moment. They're still working on the swelling. He was not in the facility today. He was getting um, getting treatment done elsewhere, outside of the Lakers facility. Um, but I think the one thing that's um, that's optimistic here, and this is something that we should note, is he characterized what's going on with LeBron as preventative. Now, that was not on his own accord. Someone asked him, if this was more preventative, and Frank Vogel said, correct, it is. Essentially, what the Lakers are trying to do with LeBron is make sure he's back to 100% before putting him back out on the floor in order to prevent a greater problem from occurring later on. There had been some concern that, okay, there's swelling in the knee. Maybe Maybe there's something really wrong in there that they just didn't catch. It sounds like they're more concerned that the swelling in the knee could turn into something much worse if they don't just take care of it right now. So that is a good sign from that perspective. Yeah, I agree. That points back to the, uh, what was said previous, that there was no specific injury that caused this. It wasn't a point where you could say, yeah, you know, in the third quarter of that game on, you know, last Tuesday, I landed awkwardly or something like that. That's that, that, that is, you know, good news that there's not a specific injury. Now, if this is, if we're still having this conversation a month Mm -hmm. from now, that's a problem, right? Because then that means someone they just can't figure it out, right? And that's not that's not a good thing because you shouldn't just be having uh soreness for no reason. But yeah, if this turns into another week of you know him sitting out, it kind of is what it is. We we talked about it, it it 
probably kills the likelihood that they move up into the uh, assured playoff mm-hmm. spot in the top six. They're five games behind. I, I don't necessarily see Dallas, Denver slipping that far uh, any, anymore. I don't. They, they'd also have to pass the Clippers and the Timberwolves, uh, who, you know, I mean, that's not a huge thing. They're only a game and a half behind even the Timberwolves. But, yeah, that says to me that it's probably, hey, we kind of know where where we are in the standings. It's probably not a lot's going to change. Let's get this right so that when we do get into that point, we're able to make some noise and do what we have to do. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Vogel was asked about priorities, and he was told, he, he said that, the, in terms of ranking the priorities, number one is getting LeBron healthy for the long haul. That's that's what, instead of looking at the standings or anything like that, the Lakers are focused on getting him healthy for the long haul. So yep. as they should be. Um, mm-hmm. All right, let's jump over to the Washington Wizards. Spencer Dinwiddie had some interesting comments about how the Wizards weren't too keen on him uh, trying to step into a leadership role. I believe we talked about this a little bit yesterday. Uh, yeah. Kevin O'Connor of the ringer now has the wizards perhaps looking to move on from Spencer Dinwiddie, who is one of their big acquisitions of the off season. Uh, does this surprise you Keith that now we're getting that after that statement, now we're getting rumblings that the wizards are looking to move him. Um, I, I think it's probably more that they were looking to before yes. the statement, but now it's just, you know, it's all kind of coming out because now everybody cares more i guess is the best way to put that about about the wizards but dinwiddie he kind of has gone the way their season has gone he was really good at the start of the year and then as his play has slipped and i'm not saying it's all because of him that the team has slipped because clearly there's a whole lot of other things going on but he's shooting under 40 percent for the year from the field 31 percent from three uh scoring is down is his rebounds are about where they usually are as assists are in range of where they usually are but yeah he just looks like he is you know kind of falling off a little bit and that's that that's tough and now the challenge is if you're the wizards is all right so you want to look to to move spencer dinwiddie there's definitely teams that would still take him but now you're talking about this is not 10 million dollar a year spencer dinwiddie anymore this is 17 million this year, 18 million next year. Then his final year, which was was smart on their part, is um it's 18.8 million, but it's 10 million guaranteed. Um, now he can get to that being a fully guaranteed number if he plays in 50 games this year and next mm. year. Uh, he's barring something crazy going to get there because he's already at 40 games uh, this year. Um, you know unless he's out, you know, with injuries next year. But yeah, it's it's let's. You know, see what happens with this one. But yeah, it's the Wizards' problems go far beyond just finding a Spencer Dinwiddie trade. I feel fairly confident in that. Will be interesting to see what his trade market looks like and if they can indeed sure. move him uh, by the deadline. I would assume there would be, would be some teams interested, but um, there's not a ton of teams that need point guards, which is something that we've seen nope. out there. So uh, we'll see. Like if I'm if I'm random team. Random team A, whoever it is. I, mean, I know like the Clippers have been thrown out there as a team that needs a point guard, maybe the Knicks, maybe whoever, right? If you're random team and you want a point guard, I'm probably calling the Celtics first about Dennis Schroeder before I'm committing long-term to Spencer Dinwiddie. I mean, yeah. it depends on the team. Every, you know, it's an eye of the beholder thing. Sure. But I think there's some other options that are out there on the market that might draw interest mm-hmm. ahead of Dinwiddie, which could complicate things even further for the Wizards. Yeah, I think you might want to like uh, look at the Knicks with Kemba Walker if they wanted to move him or something like that. Yeah, I'm with you. It's just, I mean, that's it's a bigger number for a guy who I don't know that he's going to be fully a starting level point guard again, just with, with the way this has kind of all come together. All right. Speaking of the Celtics, uh, there was some stuff on Jalen Brown and some pressure that he's putting on the team. So why don't we dive into that? And uh, I'll take a little break and sure. let me know when you're when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, this came from Steve Bullpet. Uh, Steve Bullpet was a longtime writer for the Boston Herald. Uh, has been very well connected within the Boston Celtics organization for a number of years. Uh, his reporting isn't that the Celtics are shopping Jalen Brown. Quite the opposite, actually. The, the Celt- his Celtic sources say they're not. I can tell you I've heard the exact same thing from people within the team. Uh, but he also adds, other teams have told him, which I've also heard the same thing, that the Celtics aren't shopping Jalen Brown. Uh, his bigger thing was that as they've started to play better here now over the last, let's say, month, they had a really good month of January, played pretty good, 
that they are that Jalen Brown is one of the guys who's putting a little bit more pressure on his teammates, on the coaches, maybe even on the front office to, you know, Hey, let's keep this going. We're finally becoming the team we thought we could be, you know, let's do this. And why that, that is probably a little bit more important is that means that it's not, Hey, I don't just want to see a Dennis Schroeder salary dump at the trade deadline. Like get us some help. Let's try to, you know, improve this team. And I think that is, um, you know, that's, that's what the best players on a team should do. They should be pushing teams to continually make the team better. Um, as long as you don't get involved in go get this guy, go get that guy, because that's when it can go sideways. Just, you know, put that pressure on and go go from there. So not a huge story. A lot of people are taking it as Jalen Brown wants right. out or Jalen Brown says must win or I'm leaving. Uh, it's not that's not the story. But the story is, you know, hey, there's starting to be a little bit of pressure from from Brown. And the reality is he's halfway through his contract uh, that he signed is his new new deal uh, that he signed, you know, kicked in last year. This is year two of it. So after this year, he's only got two more years under contract left. And that's about when we start to hear guys, you know, if they're in the position to put a little pressure on their organization. Absolutely. So we'll see where things go from there. Um, let's finish things up, though, with another wing player, Jeremy Grant. Welcome back. Yeah. Welcome back, Jeremy yes. Grant. Sounds like he might even play tonight. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. a major name out there on the trade market. We'll see how that might factor in to maybe how many minutes he plays and that sort of thing. But uh, he could be back. He's expected to be back this week and could even play in tonight's game for the Detroit Pistons. Uh, nice to see him back out on the floor. Yeah, and let me use this as a little bit of a soapbox moment. The Pistons do not need to, nor will they showcase Jeremy Grant. They may get him out there to prove, hey, he's healthy, he's past this thumb injury, he's ready to go. But they don't need to say, hey, Jeremy Grant, you're going to play 40 minutes a night so teams can really see how good you are. It's not how this works. Jer teams know who Jeremy mm -hmm. Grant is. They feel really good about Jeremy Grant's skill set. They just need to, maybe there might be a couple of, like, hey, can we see him play a couple games? I just want to make sure that thumb doesn't look like it's a mess. I'm um, with that. But showcasing players is, that is when it is a player who was not in the rotation at all all of a sudden is in the rotation and playing 25 minutes a night in games. And it's like, where did this come from? That's a showcase. Teams don't, don't have to showcase. Cause I've heard some people saying the Celtics pushed Dennis Schroeder to play so they could showcase him with a, with, with a, you know, first trade value teams know who Dennis Schroeder is. They know what his trade value is in their mind. It's not, this is not a thing that happens with veteran players. It's usually a younger player or a veteran who hasn't really played at all in a season. Now that's, those are the guys that get showcased, not these guys who are regular rotation guys or guys whose value is quite well known. So there it is. I'll step down off my soapbox and uh, let, let you finish it out. Yeah, I, I agree hundred percent. I don't think there's any real need. I mean, other than just, Hey, prove that he's healthy, but teams can find that out other ways too, that, that Jeremy Grant's healthy. They know exactly what he's going to provide. Sure. There's a reason why he's the top name out there on the trade market, why so many teams are after him. He's a guy that can fit into a lot of different systems, a lot of different play styles. Uh, there is word out there that, you know, he doesn't want to be the like fourth option on offense. He wants to still be a key piece. Yep. And so that may be a factor in his trade discussions here, but uh, getting back out on the floor, Probably not a showcase, but at least it's good to see that he's healthy. I think that's going to be an important thing for the trade market. And, uh, of course, you know, for him as a player, always nice to see a player coming back from injury and doing what they love. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Yeah. You know, get get back out there, do, do your thing, and let's see where, where it goes from there. All right. Well, I think that wraps things up for today. Appreciate everybody joining us. Make sure you do subscribe to the NBA Front Office YouTube channel. Turn on those notifications. And don't forget. Let your friends know about this show. We'd appreciate it. <laughs> Till next time, everybody. Stay safe and see you.